This is today's key figure. Okay. <laughs> so maybe, <laughs> yeah. If you look at this key figure, maybe, yeah, this will be good for exam, probably. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so yesterday, or up to yesterday, I talked about this uh, evolutionary fluctuation response relationship. So what we have found is that this fluctuation by noise is proportional to evolution speed, phenotypic evolution speed, phenotype. And then, according to Fisher's theorem, this is also this. And so that is this. And we discuss why this is so. And maybe we have some kind of a theory for this uh, phenotype and genotype. And if uh, this is uh, stable in XA space, and then probably we can discuss this kind of relationship. And that is also supported by some model simulations using this uh, reaction network model and the gene regulation network model. So then, OK, maybe this might be similar to thermodynamics. And in thermodynamics, in our yeah, statistical physics or equilibrium thermodynamics, so we, even though we have many, many degrees of freedom, so it's represented by few macroscopic variables. So even though you have many dimensions, so somehow it's represented by few degrees of freedom. And so that comes back to this uh, first day's questions. So you have many, many components. So if this, so you have x1, many, many component, concentration x3, x4, many. So it's a very high dimensional state. So this uh, component concentration. So this is phenotype space very high dimensional. So generally, we may expect this phenotype state is scattered around this uh, uh, thousand dimensional space or something like that. But this viewpoint is that evolution occurs somehow very some macroscopically, yeah, few degrees, so determined by few degrees of freedom, something like macroscopic variable. So then the question is that, OK, from this high dimensional state, is it possible that maybe this can be represented by some low dimensional manifold or low dimensional state? Manifold. So, so that's the question we we are addressing here. So, and this is related to the question addressed in the first day. So, actually, in the first day, we discussed that uh, even though there are many, many components, it, this is very high dimensional, but somehow, so in the steady growth condition, this may be somehow represented by some simple linear law. And then, actually, then we have some remaining question. So in the first day, we discussed this kind of relationship. And then this can be applied to the same stress, same type of stress, and changing the strength. And if it's a very, the, degree of change is very small, then we linearize everything. And then, so we can derive, okay, we can derive this kind of, so linear relationship here. So that's, I discussed, I, I think it's the first day. Then, at that moment, so we have some kind of mystery. The first mystery is that 
okay, this law, we linearize everything. So usually in linearization, if the change is small, okay, this is fine. But it looks like even if the change is not so small, this can be applied. So that's the first question. And the second question in the first day is that in this case, so we can compare a uh, same stress, same type of stress, and then so change a little bit stress and a little bit more larger stress, and then we linearize everything, and we can get that these changes for each component change across high dimensional space should be somehow one dimensional, so proportional, and every component is aligned along this line. And that was okay. But the question there, one first question, as I said, is that linearization works too well. And the second question is that then we compare different type of stress. And so then generally it goes to a different direction in this high dimensional space. So it's difficult to assume simple relationship. But still, this kind of experiment shows that the change by osmotic pressure and by starvation, and each point is a kind of each different messenger arena concentration. And I, I think you heard, heard some more uh, omics uh, method <laughs> yesterday. So maybe now you, you know how to get this kind of messenger arena each concentration change. But anyway, so each point is that each different messenger RNA concentration. So that's uh, more than 4,000 or something like that points here. So still it looks like mostly very much correlated and proportional. And so, so the question is why? So, okay, there is another data. This is uh, due to by, so that was transcriptome, so it's messenger RNA. And this is a proteome. So th this uh, person, Heinemann, uh, so computed, me measured uh, this uh, pro protein concentration across many protein species. And so again, so we had same plot here, so in a different condition, so this kind of some starvation versus uh, some kind of they put glycerol or something. And again, this seems to be, yeah, proportional. And and actually, this slope roughly agrees with this growth rate change. So the previous theory says that this is represented by the growth change, growth rate change. So that seems to be okay. So, so the remaining question here is that okay, these, these questions. So that means, in the theory, I just assumed that Okay, it's just a steady growth state. And linearize everything. But of course, bacteria is not, not just a steady growth system. It's a, a result of evolution over many, many years. So maybe this is a result of evolved system. And in this discussion yesterday, so maybe in the study of evolution this how robustness of this uh, kind of good fitted state is important, this robustness is important. So then the question is that, okay, maybe this is a result of evolved system. Yes. I mean, when you say it's achieved in an evolved system, you mean that uh, the linearity is adaptive itself? Because like in general, I mean, it's true that is uh, Yes, yeah, so maybe a linear region is expanded. But the point is that it's expanded because uh, it provides a fitness advantage or it's a constraint? It may be a, we, we do not put anything. So maybe this will be a, probably a result of some robustness of this fitted state. So even if you make some perturbation. So, but, but of course, we, we do not know 
what was uh, E. coli before evolution? <laughs> so because we know E. coli, only after evolution we have. So then, so experimentally, this question is difficult to answer. So again, we, we use this, uh, yeah, same model of this. So <laughs> you know, you are already familiar with this model. And uh, okay, so this is uh, maybe Maybe some already did a tutorial and succeeded in getting zips law, for, for instance. Then, yeah, we are not sure. But, uh, but anyway, we use this. And then, so, and we assume that this kind of transporter, so this is a nutrient transport, is not just diffusion. It's a catalyzed by some component. Then, so as we discussed, uh, maybe, four days ago or something. Uh, so in some regions, so this is, uh, shows this dip slow power law, rank abundance power law. And also, so in this region, so some kind of adaptation to this state is possible. So that's a general property. And that is true even for just randomly chosen network. Then. Maybe still, if you in change the network, maybe cells, this cell can grow much faster or something. So what we did is that, okay, evolve the system again. So I, I mentioned about this evolution uh, a little bit uh, maybe two days ago, and anyway, what we did is that we have this cell. And there is environment, and this is maybe nutrient concentration in this simple system. And for this simulation, we assume that there is 10 nutrients, 10 nutrients, 10 different nutrient species. So we have uh, X1, X2, X10. This, these are nutrient chemicals. And then we ap apply some external condition. So in this external condition, nutrient concentration is basically just same some value here. And evolve this system with this environment. And what we are trying to do is that after evolution of this system, we put some stress, so this is uh, what we did in this experiment. So this experiment, we put some stress. So stress in this simple model maybe change this concentration. So stress may, for example, this may zero, 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 and this is a much larger E1, E2, or something like that. So we put some stress, so that is basically, so the stress we apply later is that, okay, we have, so this is original, and then, so, so this is stress. And so this gives a, Stress, stress direction, e, so if E1 direction, E2 direction, or something like that. So this is stress, uh, this vector is a stress type. So we put this stress or this stress. And lambda is the, so stress strength. So this is somewhat similar to the experiment. So, so this is a simple model, so, but uh, maybe with this simple model, maybe what we can do is something like that. 
Okay, so first, so before putting this stress, we just uh, evolve this system. And then, so in this evolution, again, we change a little bit the network by mutation and select a higher growth cell. So that's the evolution method. So then, so initially, the growth rate is here. And then per generation, this growth rate increases. And then we have this. So the strategy here is that, OK, compare this and this cell. And can we have some kind of a, what this deep linearity, so large linearity regime and uh, across a different type of stresses, we have such kind of a proportionality if this state, but not this state. So that's what we are trying to do. And actually, so, okay. Okay, so maybe, maybe I can show, okay, from this. And so first, for changing lambda, the linear regime, and how this linear regime increases is that, okay, so, okay, maybe, okay, maybe, maybe I can come to this. And so in that previous discussion, this, uh, if you have this kind of, And then, so this slope is proportional to delta mu growth rate change. And so here we plot the slope, and slope may be sometimes bad, but we, we just compute the slope. And slope versus this relationship. And this is, the initial red one is the initial one. So it's just scattered. But green one is after evolution. And so this is. And even if you increase, okay, increase the stress, so this lambda, when you increase the lambda, okay, maybe if lambda is very small, random net case, so initial case, can show this slope and uh, this uh, relationship is fine. This is because even for the ram this random net, still we can use steady growth condition and we, in this model, steady growth. And the first theory says that just steady growth. And then in that case, so for the same type of stress, and uh, this, this stress is small, this initial theory, just steady growth can work. So that is here. But if you increase this environmental stress, then as we expected, this is scattered much, much larger. So it does not work so well for the random net initial network. But in, after the evolution, this green point, okay, this seems to be worse. So maybe after evolution, linear regime is expanded. So maybe this uh, first uh, question is cleared. And the second question is that, okay, this is a called different, the next question is about the different direction. So the previous one is that given this and just changes. So this is uh, something like, uh, so given stress, so the same direction, X, maybe X1, X2, 
and same stress direction we have seen. So what we have observed is that somehow this linear regime increased in this. And then the next question is that different type of stress. So we have different vector here. So it should go, it may go to a different direction. Then the result may be changed. So then, so across different directions, we made this kind of, yeah, change. So this is one example. So this is one vector of this and another vector here. So that is uh, one vector here and another vector here. And again, we plot all, all delta xi. All delta xi. So this is logarithmic change, as we discussed. And then, OK, this initial network result is something like so this blue one, not, nothing, <laughs> nothing peculiar, it's just scattered around. And then after evolution, maybe this is 10 generation, maybe there is some structure. And after 150 generations, so all points showed this behavior. So, so this is, so what? we have observed in the experiment. So maybe, so after evolution, we can get this. And so we, we this is just two examples of different stresses, E1 and E2 vector, but uh, we can have many, many different types of stresses. And actually we did many different types of stresses, and then this uh, kind of, okay, we measure this kind of uh, yeah, correlation coefficient. And for this evolved network, it's very close to one. This one. And, but for random network, it's just so the average zero and very yeah, broadly distributed. And this kind of uh, correlation coefficient, so initially almost zero, and then after evolution, it approaches to okay, one or 0 0.9. So, so that's what, so we, we obtained what we have, okay, ex expected. Okay, one interesting point here is that, okay, we put evolution occurs under this stress, uh, this environment. So this is not expected through the course of evolution. So we always put this environment, fixed environment, but these are different uh, environmental directions. And, but somehow across these, the result here somehow knows that. So, so the question is why? Okay, we, this is somewhat, uh, okay, so we have, so, good result, and then still we do not know why. And okay, so in this model, as we ex explained, this is a, okay, very high dimensional. And the, actually in simulation, we used a thousand components. Thousand components, and as uh, I, so you know, in this kind of tutorials, <laughs> uh, this is a model of stochastic. So this is very noisy. It's just randomly chosen reaction molecules and react. So it's a stochastic model. So these are important points. So this is very high dimension. So. Basically, the final state, final steady state, shows this uh, direction of the change. Okay. X1, X2, X3, X1000. 
So th this is very, very high dimensional. So then it's, it's hard to see. We, we cannot see thousand dimensional space. So often, so statistical method is that they use okay, principal, principal component analysis or, or some other more, more <laughs> advanced one. But basically, the idea is that this principal component analysis is that okay, this is thousand dimension, but maybe if some direction variance is dominant, okay, we choose this, the first uh, PC1 component. And then, okay, if this, so in the simplest case, so maybe if the points are scattered like this, then maybe this is PC1. And then maybe next, uh, yeah, so we choose the most variable direction. So that is given the first, yeah, principal component axis. And then the next uh, variable direction is PC2. So that's uh, kind of, Maybe you, you might have uh, used uh, in some data analysis, and, but that's a kind of standard technique. So, so we, what we did here is that, okay, originally this is very thousand dimensional, and we may put, we put many, many different environmental conditions. And then the state of delta x, so this x changes according to so environmental stresses. And then, okay, instead of plotting this original thousand dimensional space, we choose, okay, PC2 or PC1 or PC3 or something like that. And so for, to see well, we use only up to PC3 here. So basically, this is just a transformation of axis. So we, we are not doing something special. And then, okay, we compare this change of state against environmental stresses. And compare this result after evolution and before evolution. Before evolution is basically just randomness. And then, so as you can see here, in this random network case, so basically it's scattered. So there is no, no special one axis. So all axes are almost similar. And so it's just points are scattered, basically in this thousand dimensional space. So that's maybe if it's random, we, we might expect that. And then after evolution, as you can see, the points are, so constraint along, basically in this case, so roughly one dimensional manifold. Maybe at the second manifold, to two-dimensional direction, there are a, a some a little bit. So basically, this one dimension plus maybe a little bit. So this structure emerges after evolution. And that is probably related to this kind of global relationship we have seen. OK, maybe. Okay, so then, okay, maybe I should say that. Okay, this is the result across different environmental conditions. And maybe this is interesting after maybe later, is that 
Okay, this is the result for across different environmental conditions. But we can do this kind of a plot by fixing the environment, but putting some kind of genetic change, mutation, so changing the network structure. So then, so in this, so for example, in this original state, given for environment condition, and now fixing the environment and putting mutation. And then we can get something similar. And interestingly, this is also constrained into a one-dimensional manifold or low-dimensional manifold. And also, it's same. Same manifold is constant, constant, constraint. So this is, so okay, this is due to environmental change. And this is due to mutation. And actually, we also put some noise to this system. Further noise. Actually, this model already is stochastic, so it's, it's sufficiently noisy. But, but still, we, we put more noise in this simulation. Then it's uh, also constant, constraint in this. So basically, in this case, so this background, this gray one, is this due to environment. And this red one is uh, due to mutation. And this is uh, background is due to environment. And this red one is due to noise. Yes? Hi. It seems, it seems that we have different answers for these two different kinds of, of noise. Can we say that the, the components are always going to be, oh, if we have environmental variation, the changes always will appear in these components more like. Okay, so we, we, have a choose, we choose some, some fitted so network. So this network is given first. And then put environmental condition, stress, and that follows this. And then we choose this and fix environment and put some mutation. So, and of course, if you choose a totally different network after evolution, maybe this structure may be a little bit different, but it's again one dimensional manifold and this. So, this, yeah, structure is same. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so you use the, the PCA in order yeah. to reduce the dimension. So uh, how do you make sure of the consistency of your result then? Uh, this uh, contribution of this PC1, PC2, you mean? Uh, I'm asking how do you make sure of, of the consistency of your result? Because since you are using PCA, there will be a cost. So how do you make sure that, I mean, the results are very consistent? Oh, okay, what do you mean? It's, uh, okay, in this so result, so even if I take more, more samples, basically the results are the same. And also, actually this shows that contribution of this PC1 is quite high. And PC2 is small. And in this case, so maybe 70% or something. So that, that means it's mostly, yeah, constrained into a one-dimensional manifold. Is it clear? It's... <laughs> I'm not sure what's your question. Yes. And uh, the three components are consistent. Uh, the direction of the three components are consistent along the, I don't know, different trials uh, you did? Or Con not? Co consistent with the uh, what? Like if you try and run again the system starting from different uh, initial condition or something, the first three components remain, let's say, the same? Yeah, or not? For, for this evolved network, this is always this kind of behavior up here, the same manifold. And if you choose, so if you evolve again this system, and then we may have a different network 
after evolution, even though the fitness is high. And in this case, so maybe the point is different. So we may have slightly different uh, yeah, space. And in that case, so maybe it may go to a different direction. But again, this is one-dimensionally yeah, constraint. Yeah. So, so probably this is important for to understand this uh, original linear relationship because we, we this may suggest okay even though this is very high dimensional basically we can understand this change in one dimension. So if it's one dimension, that by this one dimension, so every other component change are derived accordingly. So then probably we can expect this global relationship. And that, that I'll come back later. But before going to that, okay, why this kind of structure appears after evolution? And so I guess we, we do not have a complete theory to derive this structure, but we can have some kind of yeah, argument here. So after evolution in this environment, we have a kind of good state. Probably good state is not so common, so you need to so produce somehow difficulty to produce this. And then the model is stochastic. So actually through this kind of dynamical process, there are many ways to perturb this state. There are many, many possible perturbations due to this kind of stochastic. But if it goes there, it's not so good. So good state is not so common. So once you have a very fit state, then it decreases if you go out. So that means there should be strong global attraction from all other points. So in the phenotype high dimensional space, so good state, and there is so strong attraction. So in dynamical systems, global attraction here. Then, but if this is attracted to any direction strongly, then it's very difficult to change this state. But this state is obtained after evolution. And also maybe it's still evolving. So along this direction, evolution, so how evolution progressed, and maybe next, if, uh, how it goes later. Along that direction, this state should be changeable. If this is very, very much strongly attractive, so that is good for robustness, but it's totally robust to any direction, then probably the system cannot evolve. So this system has evolved and maybe will evolve. So maybe along this evolution direction, this can be changeable. And that is also called plasticity. And so this plasticity, robustness. So, so biological why, uh, system is robust, but you need to plastic along the direction of in evolution. Why do you call it evolution, direction and evolution, not adaptation? Okay, here you, yeah, this, you can say that this is, okay, 
adaptation also. But uh, so if you if you so consider this kind of environmental stress and adapt to that, okay, you can say this is adaptation. But in this simulation, through the course of evolution, we are not putting this. So maybe this directional change is uh, the direction is uh, given by evolution. But of course, this direction should agree this, yeah, against the environmental change. So, so that is also adaptation, yeah, direction, yeah. Kuni, <clears throat> so yes. uh, can I ask the questions? Uh, does this mean that if you look at the eigenvalue spectrum of the uh, yeah. network, yes. the, um, the one with this single adaptation direction corresponding to the most positive uh, yeah. uh, eigenvalue, right? And all other eigenvalues are negative. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, 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 not positive. So this is still changing, but uh, still basically, yeah. It's, it's a, if you have this, if it's positive, if it's unstable, it can easily, go, without anything, it can go out. So here it means it's easy to change. But if you fix the network and if you fix the environment, it always stays here. But if you slightly part up the network or put the environmental stress, this in this direction it can be changed. Okay, so yeah. this this means that the own as eigenvalue more or less stay negative. Negative. And only one which is uh, change over time. Only yeah, one so, single eigenvalue change so, over time. So he's asking about this kind of uh, yeah stability of this state, and so we have this kind of uh, dynamical systems here. And then this state here. So the stability of this state is so okay. Discussed first, uh, we we get so we get a fixed point here in this uh, some given environmental condition. So that is here. And then the stability of this is discussed so okay and then this uh, eigenvalue of this jacobi matrix gives how it's attracted or not and if the fixed point is stable the eigenvalue of this lambda i so eigenvalue then all of these eigenvalues should be less than zero. So that this is stability. And if it's strong attraction means that not only this is negative, but it's magnitude, absolute magnitude. This is large. Along this direction. But here there is one direction that is lambda one is close to zero. It's negative but close to zero. Yes, this is what I understand, but what I mean is that lambda one is self fluctuating. So that sometimes it can become positive. It's not for for this state it's not fluctuating. It's a, so as long as okay. This, for this, so we, to discuss this, we assume some, so we do not consider stochasticity. We just uh, usual dynamical systems. Just, yeah. And then, yeah, we compute this. Uh, and then along this, okay, this is, yeah. And if, as long as this is stable, this is still negative. If yeah. this is close to zero, and then you have, some changeability, as you said, and you update the network structure. Yeah, and it then if close you, to zero. okay, maybe if you change the network, maybe some of them becomes unstable, but uh, but somehow maybe 
even if you change the network structure, maybe this, this structure is remained. So just, just to clarify my question, I want to think about the lambda obeying some random process. This only single lambda one. I don't say about other lambda. All other lambda, I agree they are negative. But this single lambda one uh, can be modeled as some uh, stochastic processes, so uh, according to some Langevin equation, for instance. And that one describing the process of updating the network structure. When then, whenever the network structure update, it uh, put some uh, perturbation in that lambda one. And that lambda one seen is negative but close to zero due to uh, fluctuation. Sometimes it can cross the, the zero axis and then you uh, move away from this uh, global attraction, right? If, if lambda is just uh, so due to random process and it's uh, changing by Langevin equation or something, maybe what you said could occur. But in this evolutionary process, as long as we select a fitted one, this lambda remains negative. But then everything is just global attraction. There's no way to escape, no way. No, no, to... this, but... yeah, but this, yeah, but this is close to zero, so you can change a little bit here. But the networks, of course, to change this, you need to add some kind of mutation. So, so that means uh, maybe this state will change. And then, yeah. Of course, then there could be uh, some fatal network that lambda one becomes uh, positive. But that is hardly to occur. Or some kind of this is constrained to this uh, evolution for the stability. I mean, also, you are not evolving this J, you are evolving the network. So it, it depends on the dynamics. What, I mean, there might be that the dynamics is such that there is no network that makes the system unstable. Yeah. So, so they, it's uh, not They that find that. Uh, some kind of path so around this, uh, always it's uh, stable. Yeah. So it's no, no, not just random, yeah, random process of uh, lambda. Yeah, but, but that's an uh, interesting point. And <laughs> actually, so here, so in this figure, so this is uh, so what we did later. And in this case, so instead of a stochastic model, so we, we compute this kind of uh, this dynamical systems. And then, so obtain this lambda i. And then, yeah, what we plot here is that instead of lambda i, so we plot the inverse of this lambda i. So that means if it's close, it's very large. So, so then you can see one exponent, so one eigenvalue is very so close to zero. So inverse of this is quite large. And other, so here we have, actually in this case, so we have just 100 dimensions. So just 100 uh, exponent eigenvalues. And so one is here, then second one is maybe a little bit. So maybe that suggests that this is also a little bit large. Eh? And, but others are almost, uh, yeah, much, much larger. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah, five times. So, yeah, so, so then uh, I want to come back again uh, the, about lambda. So, so you say uh, lambda, lambda one is going to be negative. So I mean, if it's negative, uh, will be in the steady state. So if you are in this, I mean, a global, I mean, one state, a steady state, so so what can make then the change of lambda one? Because you say that that, that, that line is going to change, so. so. So in this case, so this is evolutionary process. So this network and this network is different. So you change a little bit network and then this changes this dynamics, so. And then accordingly, this uh, eigenvalue also changes. So that's the plot here. Yeah, is it okay? Can I, can I ask? Yes. Uh, I don't ask the question. Ask the question. <laughs> Sorry, I missed one thing because you talked both of uh, robustness and plasticity. Yeah. But I don't, I don't like, uh, we are seeing that the direction is robust and uh, the attractor moves a bit uh, adapting. Is that maybe, 
this state should be attracted to, yeah, many from many directions. Yeah. 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 Mm, for given network and for given condition. Yes. Okay, but yeah. if you change the network, network uh, there is a plasticity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Or network or environmental condition, this. So this state. So if you put some other, yeah. So if you put some kind of environment, so maybe you put some other additional, a little bit additional term, then it may change. So that is adaptation. And if it's a evolving network, then, and so this occurs both in the same direction, given by this, yeah, IM value direction, lambda one. Uh, is it okay? Yeah. yeah. So can I can I ask? Yes. Uh, so how much are the eigenvectors uh, localized on particular components, on particular uh, xi? Actually, in this case, it's not necessarily concentrated on one component or a few components. It's a. Uh, it's quite. Broad. Yeah, rather extended. Yeah. And, and then, okay, so here, for, for instance, we check this kind of a principal component direction and versus this uh, eigenvector of this first mode. And then, okay, that is almost, okay, this is, this is 1.0. So this red one is that, okay, So basically, you have, so what we have seen is his, here, this lambda i, and so one is very close to zero, and maybe, so something like that. So lambda i, and so the first eigenvalue is very close to zero, so this is zero, and others are much. And then you can consider this kind of, uh, so, so this is an eigenvector corresponding to the, this lambda one. And so this V1 direction is probably this direction of this PC1 mode, so that everything so changes. And so, and actually, this V1, and that, so this due to environmental change or due to, yeah, kind of, a, yeah, mutation, and or to, due to noise, this agrees this direction. And this uh, is this, uh, yeah, inner product of this direction and V1 mode direction. And after evolution, okay, this is 1.0, and it approaches to 1.0. So basically, this direction and this direction is aligned. So, okay, so this is the structure. And probably the intuitive explanation for this is that, okay, maybe this attract to, but many perturbations, it's attracted to this fitted state globally, but there it leaves some kind of yeah, direction that can be more changeable through the evolution. So, and that is this. Okay, this argument still may be kind of, yeah, hand-waving argument. And uh, also, we cannot prove this direction is just one dimension. Okay, maybe evolution occurred in, uh, through this two-dimensional direction. That, that we, we cannot deny that is not the case. So, but still, probably it's still low-dimensional. Yeah. So, um, maybe I uh, did made this comment other time when we discussed it, but uh, my yeah. memory is... <laughs> <Yes. laughs> so this uh, looks like uh, similar to uh, the case where you have a um, conserved quantity. Like, say, for example, 
if you take a physical system with, say, interaction yeah. between particles, uh, yeah. then the state of the relative positions are fixed, uh, yeah. but then you have a center of mass yeah. that moves. So it's a marginal uh, stability e exactly, or... Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and kind of is, a pseudo conserved quantity. This or. is uh, also in financial market, you have the same type of idea that you have one, say, mode, market mode, which is... Yeah, where, uh, and, that, and so that the, the idea there is, is that there is essentially a conserved quantity, or, or there is a transformation, like, uh, say, for example, if you, multi if you translate all the particles, then essentially the state does not change. Can one interpret this as uh, if uh, you, you have a similar, uh, uh, say, invariance in this system, you uh -huh. multiply every, I don't know, uh, every xi by that, the same a, quantity? That's a difficult question. Yes and no. <laughs> Actually, in this special model, in this catalytic reaction network, so due to this growth rate, every component is diluted. So growth rate is a special variable. And by that, every others are constrained. And so this growth rate plays the role of this direction in this model. And, but actually, we did, uh, actually, so this Takuya Sato did some simulation using gene regulation network. And in that case, there is no dilution effect by growth. And still, in some fitness condition, we can see something similar. And in that case, so we are not so sure if, uh, yeah, such kind of uh, global variable that constrains everything exists or not, that uh, we are not so sure. Yeah, okay. okay. So basically, assuming this structure, and then maybe from that, it's not so difficult to derive this original relationship. And actually, I'm not going into details of this. So this previously, so in the first day, we discussed this kind of steady state growth condition. But instead of discussing this kind of, in this case again, okay, this Jacobi matrix and this kind of thing, but if only one eigenvalue is special and others are much more negative. So you can just choose this direction. Or otherwise, in other way, it's, uh, if you have something different direction, but everything changes projected to this direction. So instead of taking this all eigenvalues from here, this, there is a, some special direction and then everything is okay. Yes, yeah, sorry, I, in this slide I use this term instead of one. <laughs> okay. And uh, anyway, special direction, zero, one. And then every change is basically governed by this. Okay. I use three. Okay. Three, zero. So everything is projected to this direction, V0. And so lambda zero. So, so instead of computing all these, yeah, Jacobi matrix, high dimension Jacobi matrix, it's everything is just change occurs along this direction. So every change is delta x1, delta x2, delta x3 can be projected to this eigenvalue, eigenvector direction. Because, yeah, this is mostly changeable and this is a little bit small. Then, so then with some kind of, uh, yeah, calculation, okay, finally we get this kind of delta x across a different environmental condition. It's proportional to this. <laughs> it's it's, a, it's a just a kind of, a, yeah, little bit, yeah, linear, linear algebra type calculation. So, so I do not go into details, but but it's, it's natural, this is just one dimension. And this pro global proportionality also says that 
everything is uh, yeah proportional along one direction. So so that is yeah we can derive this. So probably this kind of structure uh, is the essence of this dimensional reduction and this kind of behavior we observed in the first day, and that was mystery. But uh, and if this direction is very large, so if this is close to zero, then we can extend extend this direction only by this mode. So then it's just linear. Yeah, it's just one one, one eigenvalue and one eigenvector, and then along that. So then this global, yeah, linearity, or deep linearity of EV code, may be a result of this. So maybe it's a kind of a important point is that it's robust to many directions, but uh, this uh, is somewhat plastic changeable against some other, only one or a few directions. So this structure. Okay, is this, uh, so now, now, now we finally solve the mystery of the first day, I hope. But of course, it's, uh, it's okay, we did this as uh, some kind of theoretical argument and plus some simulations. But of course, we are not completely sure about this uh, experiment. Then, there is another, yeah, interesting point here. So, this direction, and in the simulation also, this occurs against evolution, mutation, and also against adaptation. Adaptation is environmental change. So the change by genetic mutation and the change by environmental change, adaptation, is somehow very much correlated. And this is, this is you, you may find similarity of this uh, relationship between VG and VIP uh, we discussed yesterday. So in that case, so this is not environmental change. This is noise. And this is uh, mutation. But here, somehow, environmental change, and this is correlated, this suggests. So we can then okay, we can then so previously, we have seen that uh, this Some, some environmental change is given by so across many many directions. So this is given by just uh, so that yeah. So from this structure we can derive, but. We have seen, so this is the result for different type of environment. So this environment and this environment, so we, we get this. But this result says that, okay, this is true. Adaptation versus evolution. So that means instead of using this, maybe you can, some kind of genetic change, and genetic change, if I use E, E is environment and evolution, it's the same, so I use G in genetic change. So, so this suggests that, okay, genetic change, genetic change, and then, okay, some environmental change. So instead of plotting, previously we plotted, so 
デルタ X E versus デルタ X E プライム。But instead we can plot デルタ X E versus デルタ X G and across many different components. Then we can have some kind of proportionality and this is given by this slope. So now we can check this. And this actually, okay, what shall we start from? Okay, then we can so derive this kind of relationship. And then, okay, this is a, an experiment by Chikara Furusawa. And so he, he will talk about, he will talk tomorrow. I think he, he will not talk about this. He, he has much more <laughs> advanced, <laughs> much more later experiments. This is a kind of very old, yeah, almost 10 years ago. So he has, he has developed much, much interesting experiments. So tomorrow he, he shows much more advanced results. But this is his uh, kind of old result. And what in his experiment he did, this is E. coli bacteria. And then he puts some kind of stress condition. Stress condition is that, uh, okay, actually ethanol. So I do not know. Bacteria likes <laughs> alcohol or not, <laughs> but anyway, they do not like. <laughs> and the growth rate decreases. So original value, actually original growth rate is somewhere here. And then by putting ethanol, so this growth rate decreases. So this is some kind of result by kind of environmental stress. Actually, this is rather large, so, but uh, they, they put us. And then he did culture this bacteria under this ethanol condition, long time and over, over generation. Then by mutation, this growth rate is recovered. Okay, this growth rate initially here and by this, and then after some generations, it recovers, slowly recovers. So G1, G2, some genetic change. Actually, there is genetic and maybe epigenetic change. So that, that's, uh, yeah, so more, more difficult part. But uh, anyway, this argument is that, okay, we can use this genetic or epigenetic change to, in the same way. So, so anyway, so some kind of genetic or epigenetic slow change occurs here. And then, So this is recovered. So, so we can check delta mu g. So for, for example, delta mu g, maybe delta mu g in this condition. One. And then we can compute delta mu here. So this is this here. From this, we can compute this. And then again, we use transcriptome analysis. So that gives this kind of, this thousand or few thousand dimensional delta x, we get that. And then, again, we plot in the same way as this. So delta x by, okay, delta x by genetic change and delta x by e. And so if this kind of argument completely varies, so this change across different messenger RNA concentrate, 
constraint along this one dimensional line, and this slope is given by this. And this is measured by this. So that's a theoretical argument. And so the experimental result is here. For instance, they use some kind of a position, maybe thousand generations or no, no, thousand times. So that may, may be something more than a few hundred generations after. And each point is a different messenger RNA. Okay, you may think, okay, it's not so clear. <laughs> there are more, more scattered points. But recall that there are 4,000 points. So most points are along this line. And there are some a little bit scattered. So we can see rather well this kind of correlation result. And then we can compute this slope from this data. And then we can compute this and this. Actually, they measure this growth rate change in the first uh, year here. So they, they measure that directly. And then check if this slope agrees with this or not. And that's the result here. So now each point is not a messenger RNA. Each point is that this slope versus this delta mu at given generation. So, okay. So, for, for instance, here, 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 here. And we plot here, okay, maybe this is after 10 generations, after 20 generations, 30 generations, or something like that. So theory says that this is equal. So there is no fitting <laughs> something. So it's uh, just this should be diagonal. This and this should be equal. OK. Looks fine. Yeah. So since this, this is a rather compli complicated bacterial <laughs> evolution experiment. So this agreement is, yeah. I think it's a quite, yeah, surprising or good. And another point, so that I said is a kind of Le Chatelier principle, is that, okay, in this evolution, initially we put some stress here, and then it goes down. And this evolution occurs to decrease this decrease of growth. So the growth rate should increase to recover the original level. So that means this is always less than one because this is large change and this is recovered. So this is somehow yeah, recover then. So for instance, here, actually around here, it's maybe 50% are recovered. So that is 0 0.5 here. So this, so that means this slope change, this slope, slope also should be less than one. So that means, okay. Initially, no, maybe very little genetic change. Then this is almost the same. So in that case, so so initially, this is almost slope one around here, and then as evolution go is going on. Maybe this, maybe here. Okay, later this is, and maybe if perfectly <laughs> recovered, maybe it comes back here. So that means genetic change. So this, so delta x by genetic change 
is somehow try to compensate the delta x induced by environmental change. And here, it's always this stress exists. So, so it's a system, a system could be different because there is some, some kind of stress. But the system tries to somehow cancel out to the direction to cancel out the induced change by stress. And so this occurs by genetic change, so mutation. So, so in the first day, I, I talked about some kind of possible similarity or possible possibility to have some kind of a thermodynamics type theory for biological systems. And so yesterday, we discussed this evolutionary fluctuation response relationship that is somehow kind of maybe so extension of fluctuation response relationship in thermodynamics to biological evolution. And this is maybe, yeah, I'm not sure how many nodes uh, Le Chatelier principle, but that is a very important uh, principle in thermodynamics. When you put this thermodynamic system, equilibrium state system to a different condition, then internal state to so cancel out the induced change generally occurs. So for, for instance, if you put this some kind of chemical reaction system into high temperature, then the reaction rate to um, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> End of XO. I, I, I'm not sure. Uh, so, reduce the heat, reduce the temperature, occurs that direction. So, maybe absorbing some heat or some. This direction occurs. So, that's uh, generally so kind of property of a thermodynamic system. And that's a result that stability of the thermodynamic equilibrium state. And, okay, this may be also similar to that this kind of initial biological system is somewhat stable, so that it's, it's very difficult, but it's reached some kind of stable state. Then, by genetic change, they try to come back to this original level. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not uh, it's not surprising because after all, uh, life is chemical reaction. So if you take a batch of many chemical reaction, yeah, what Le Chatelier tells you about one, yeah, should be also consequence for a huge number of chemical reactions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, but this is a huge huge number of chemical reactions. But in, in usual. Yeah, thermodynamics, it's a huge number of molecules. Yeah, so that point is different. And also, maybe this is not an equilibrium system. E. coli is not an equilibrium system. But of course, it's a stable system. Yeah, and probably important thing is that, OK, that is, so actually, this is also we discussed with Yuichi Wakamoto. Uh, he gave a talk uh, some time ago. So if you put some kind of external change, there are some kind of homeostasis, and the system tries to come back to this uh, original state, to keep this as much as possible to, to that direction. And of course, without, so maybe that is slightly possible without genetic change, so by adaptation. But then, Furthermore, with this genetic change, they try to come back to this kind of homeostatic state. So this is homeostatic code. So most genes try to come back. And interesting point is that here, through the course, always environmental stress exists. So the system here from the original and here is different. So we, we have a large ethanol condition. So Still, genetic change tries to somehow buffer the external induced change. So 
So that's maybe reasonable if this biological system is robust. Yeah, but, but this is, yeah, kind of interesting result here. Can yeah. I ask another question? I mean, um, w w is there, a, in your opinion, a relation with, uh, if you want, the other course, so the protein allocation models, etc.? Because uh, if you think about uh, protein allocation models, they say that uh, the expression of uh, different genes uh, depends on the specific sector, but is always linear with the growth rate, yeah. right? So I, I think it's uh, somehow, this is a kind of a maybe general form for that. And so maybe among this kind of relationship, maybe in this uh, other, yeah, Schechter, Scott Hualo, uh, in that case, so ribosomal RNA, ribosome is quite important. So it's a kind of autocatalytic process. And so it's autocatalytic process plus others. And then maybe this is somewhat special. And we can discuss using this kind of special thing. But maybe we don't need that. It's a more, yeah, generally expressed uh, in, yeah. Okay, and then, so in this, so I discussed this kind of principal component analysis change. So actually, he did this kind of principal component analysis, how through the course of evolution. So this is not due to the adaptation. So we, we put this initially with this stress, and then through this course of adaptation, so how it changes. So maybe this is a little bit strong uh, discussion of this. So this is PC1, PC2, or PC3. And then, so this delta X space is project to this. And then original state here. And then evolution occurs. Evolution occurs, evolution occurs here, like this. So that's this. And here, actually here, they repeated uh, seven, exper six experiments. And this, the, each case, mutation occurs in a different position. So evolutionary, in genetic sense, it's not completely the same. It's different. But phenotypically, they basically follow the same curve. So, so it's a kind of very strong statement. So genetically, maybe change can occur in a different way if we repeat the same evolution experiment. Because maybe genetic mutation can occur in a different position. So, maybe, so it can not be completely the same. But still, phenotypically, they are almost the same. And actually, there is one, so up to somewhere, but there is one change. And actually, in this case, so it's more <laughs> gene duplication, the number of genes changes through this evolution. So that's a very strong change. So maybe this is a, a little bit exceptional one. So, but as long as the gene number is same and then some mutation occurs, then it follows the same curve. So, so sometimes, okay, if you repeat the evolution again, we can have the same thing or not. There, there, there is often discussion, so Jay Good or some many people discuss, okay, if this is replaying the tape of evolution, the same evolution occurs or not. And in this simulation, I don't know, in this experiment, so same phenotypic path occurs, so phenotypic evolution occurs, but genetically different. 
So, so that's a very interesting point. And this is a little bit stronger result of this uh, original, this low dimensional, yeah, constraint. But through the course of evolution, this is, yeah. M maybe it's, uh, yeah, sa similar, or, but previous discussion, after evolution, we consider this. But here, we put this here, and then along this here. But actually, this is also a result of evolved system. Oh, this, this is also a result of a, yeah, evolved bacteria under different environmental condition, original different environmental condition. And this is so in this ethanol condition. So here you have evolved bacteria under ethanol condition. Here evolved bacteria under original usual condition. So maybe here it's also constraint, and here it's also constraint. So maybe, yeah, something like that. So, so that's this uh, yeah, experiment. And so since we have this experiment, maybe okay, this, this maybe you, you will show this very beautiful experiment of this system tomorrow. OK. And then, of course, we, we also checked uh, this uh, simulation. <laughs> simulation, maybe after, after experiments, maybe simulation is <laughs> not, not so yeah, remarkable. But, uh, but in this uh, original model, so we, we have this uh, E0, E0, E0 of this uh, nutrient concentration and make a kind of totally different E1, E2, E10 vectors. And then, so at this stage, so after I evolved this system, totally different environmental conditions. So that's similar to this. And then, again, the growth rate decreases. So this is the growth rate of this evolved bacteria. So over generation, under this condition, uh, under this condition, it's evolved, so the growth rate increases. And then we put a different condition, and then the growth rate decreases. And then we do kind of evolution mutation plus selection process again. And then it increases. And then again, we can check the similar thing, same thing here. So that's completely the same thing here. Yes. Excuse me. So, could you say some words about uh, which type of experiment you, me you mentioned? Para the massive sequencing of messenger RNAs, or oh, uh, in this uh, in this measurement. So, this uh, yeah, delta X is uh, that uh, measured by transcriptome, so me messenger RNA. So all messenger RNA. Yeah, yes. That that's basically we, yeah in this kind of uh, plot of this delta X uh, we. Usually so you extract yeah. uh, all the RNA from yeah, all the, RNA. So the transcription from yeah. the cell? From the, from yeah, over, not a single cell, over cells. Over yeah. many cells. Yeah. And then you massively para, uh, sequence yeah. all the messenger RNAs, yeah, messenger RNA. and you identify, you measure yeah. basic, the sequence. They, they basically, so how this concentration of messenger RNA changes from the original state, and this change. So basically, in this case, so messenger RNA has a, I see the bacteria, so it's something like 4,000. Yeah, so, so there, there, there's 4,000 points here. Yeah. So and how long is the messenger RNA typically, or how long are the RNAs uh, that you sequence, or? It's length of RNA? Yeah, uh, how long? I'm, I'm not so sure yet. Uh, okay. Yeah, but, but this transcript analysis, so they can, yeah, basically, so distinguish all different messenger RNA. And so since this E. coli have uh, something 4,000 genes, so basically 4,000 messenger RNA. And okay. so basically they can measure each different messenger RNA concentration. Of course, if it's uh, very tiny, maybe this, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, accuracy is bad, so we, we eliminate. So maybe we don't, don't have uh, 4,000 points, maybe 3,000 points or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 
And maybe protein analysis is more proteome analysis, maybe more reliable or, or may, maybe has a better, yeah, data. And that's uh, actually in this, uh, okay, in this delta xi and delta xj. And only this result is uh, kind of due to the protein, so pro many different protein concentration. But that is more difficult to experiment with. So we usually use, uh, the, the or they usually use the message RNA. The, the point is that most are, there are two types of RNAs, let's say. Yeah. Coding RNAs, and these are the messenger RNAs yeah. you are saying, and non-coding RNAs, which are a lot of them. Yeah. So they, uh, they are not it's included. a partial analysis. Yeah. So they, they are basically, yeah, transcriptome. So it's a transcribed from genes. So basically coding RNA. Coding RNA is yeah. only, okay. Yeah. So that corresponds to each protein. Yeah. So, so you maybe, maybe protein data is more, yeah, clear. <laughs> Proportionality than compared similar. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, but maybe protein case is a little bit better. I don't know. Yeah, but the theory itself is that uh, just any component X. So <laughs> it does not matter if it's a protein or messenger RNA or any other. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Oh, we are talking about the result of simulation and. Actually, the simulation says again this delta x. So after generation, so what we did is the same thing. So this here, 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 and we plot delta x change. And again, so after some generation, delta x e versus delta x g, and delta x e versus delta x g, g 50, so 50 generations. And so the slope starts to decrease. And this slope agrees with this growth rate change. So, so okay, simulation is also consistent. Yeah. And also, the result of here, actually, after taking this evolution, okay, then they follow the same curve. So in this simulation, so actually Sato did uh, repeat this kind of, so many, so starting from this same network and by changing the network by mutation. So each case has a different network of so mutated, but still phenotypically, so the same direction as in this case. But if we use non-evolved gene, just random gene, then this does not ha happen. So this is just, uh, Diversify in any direction. So, so, so maybe everything is consistent with simulation and experiment and some theoretical argument. Okay. Oh. But it's, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we cannot finish this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe it's uh, already ten thirty. Yeah. So I, I talk a little bit about this uh, relationship between this and VGVIP relationship. Uh, uh, so I, I'll talk tomorrow. And actually there are two more, <laughs> two more <laughs> pictures I left, <laughs> so I'm not sure. <laughs> OK, yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 one more. But uh, I prepared two more. <laughs> And the slides are uploaded, two more slides are uploaded, but uh, probably I, I cannot discuss the last one, only the next one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's a good suggestion, but maybe they will not allow me. <laughs> they, they are so willing to learn. <laughs> Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, just a reminder that the next class. Ah, so there are other questions that are important. Questions? Okay.
So if there are no questions, just a reminder that after the break, we'll uh, reconvene in the lab at 11.